trends of the future. People have questions about it. They want to know what direction they should take. This is difficult. They want me to put my little hat on and predict where we're going. Where are things going? Do a magician little trick here. But nobody knows everything about where we're headed. See, that's the problem. And any predictions I make here are bound to be too conservative. But let's give it a go anyways. Let's try and think about maybe where we are headed and what we can be doing next. What's coming on the horizon, in fact. We've had 26 shows so far. This is number 27, the last one. Trends of the future and where we're going. It's important to reflect on all this. To make sense of the world. Do you have a strategic plan for where you're headed? Do you know where you're going? Is it more mobile? More digital? Is it in the cloud? Will we have new interfaces? We had the old days of mobile, which were pretty heavy, right? Lugging things around campus, those big laptop computers and so forth. Today, the new days of mobile are much lighter, crisper and cleaner and cheaper. We have tablets that, heck, in India announced a new computer that was $35. Tablet computers might be under 100 by the end of the year. The new Kindle is like, I don't know, $120 or $30 or something like that, Kindle 3. So prices are coming down. Things are crisper and cheaper and the displays are better. We can play our iPhones as a flute. We've got technology wrapped all around us today, whether we have James Bond watches or 3D worlds or we have lensware that gets us into augmented realities. Haptic interfaces, kinesthetic holographic images, in fact. Still more mobile days to come. Bendable text. Be able to take your mobile device and just bend out the screens. And soon, you know, lighter, cheaper, crisper displays. This is all coming. There's no doubt about that. The cost, of course, is going to come down. The features are going to go up on these units. They're going to be cheaper, smaller, crisper, of course. Netbooks today, what's going to happen tomorrow? Those netbook chips will be in your mobile phone soon, according to my friend Elliot Soloway at Michigan. Will life be in the cloud? We'll let the technologists decide that. What we have to be concerned about is the pedagogical activities, whether in the cloud or face-to-face -face or somewhere else. Will let learning be increasingly virtual? Perhaps. Will it be more teleportic? Will we have telepresence and holographic images? Undoubtedly so. Sun and Cisco are bringing us teleported instructors into our classes. More personalized learning, I think, is where we're headed. More adaptive systems to our individual humanistic needs of that learner to make it a conversation that's specific to him or her. Of course, our policies and degrees are still emerging in the midst of all this. New pro global programs, international ones. Some will be free. Some will be you know, free course here or there. But there'll be options for students to select from, of course, and that will expand. New trends. How will we learn about these new trends? Well, we can talk to our colleagues and go to conferences with them. Read journal articles. Rethink your role as an instructor. Will you be a concierge or a super e-mentor or a coach or an assessment specialist or an instructional designer? Rethink your delivery platforms to combine these different technologies and mix them up in a blended format or some other delivery mechanisms. And these delivery mechanisms will continue to explode, as will new forms of colleges and universities. Explosion of free online content is not going to go away anytime soon. This is going to keep proliferating up. And that's perhaps important for the learners, the billions of learners that will get access to the internet. They will create self-determined degrees, self-determined learning, just-in-time learning. Adults in particular, millions of them around the world, 500,000 right here in Indiana have some college degree but never finished. Three, four, five million in Texas. 500,000 in Kentucky. Adult learners want to get higher ed degrees, and they'll do that through technology means. Their instructors might come from other countries, as might their peers and programs. Choosing your peers, choose your instructors. That might become more common in the future, but will always be surrounded by issues of quality, access, plagiarism, and so forth, and copyright. These will be issues that continue to be addressed. We'll have more mobile, undoubtedly. We'll have more voice-activated systems, more intelligent filters.
but what really is going to happen is a renaming of the web to the web of learning. When we have the web of learning, the web of learning means the web's all around us for learning. Blogs, podcasts, wikis, whether we're talking about that fabulous web 2.0 with Google, Facebook, Ming, Blogger, Wikipedia, technologies that personalize our learning, that let us add to the internet. Skype for discussion, Illuminate for webinars, LinkedIn for social networking as well as Facebook, Photo Bucket and Flickr for our pictures, Flat World Knowledge for our free books. We're at a jumping off point now to move into this next phase of the web 2.0, university and school 2.0 as well, what we call personalizing our learning environments. George Seaman, Stephen Downs, Scott Wilson, Graham Atwell, all are promoting this notion of personalizing our learning environments, or PLEs. In these PLEs, we'll have more culturally diverse classes. We'll have more demand for top instructors to teach different classes and create videos of best practices on the web. More partnership opportunities across universities, governments, publishers, schools, companies, e-learning providers, more social activities, more socially interactive activities on the web, increasing emphasis from the iPad and other technologies. But there's no slowing down. There is no slowing down. No slowing down at all. We can't put a moratorium on new technologies. Technologies are up in the clouds. They're here on my desk here. They're all over the place. They're on other planets eventually. You know, there are trends happening. So personalized learning environments I heard mentioned in the United Kingdom four years ago. In China, a couple of years ago, there's simulations from the National Guard and the military that push out the far envelope of what's possible already. There's teleported instructors from a program called Contact North in Ontario, where instructors get teleported into First Nation places in the northern remote parts of Ontario, where they don't even have paved roads and running water, maybe. Personalizing our learning with conversations and learning paths and social events, apprenticeship possibilities. As an administrator, you have to decide about books, ebooks, and mobile learning, and cloud computing, and open source access. As an instructor, you have to decide, will you be a concierge, counselor, credit manager, a facilitator? Will you get involved in this do-it-yourself university movement, edupunks, if you will? As a student, will you use this content that's been created, free to the world? Will you put on your resume that you took a free online course or went through some self-paced materials? These are important questions to ask as an instructor, as an administrator, and as a student. And there are many, many, many more. But read through open access journals for some answers. Read through the annual Horizons report, which comes out early every year, predicting the future and where you're, we're going. And it's very short and it's free on the web. Horizons from Educause. Go to co conferences like Educause, Merlot, eLearn, Eden, Global Learn, Global Time. Be an active member in some of these international conferences about technology and online learning. The Wisconsin Distance Teaching and Learning Conference every August, my old alma mater up in Madison. All wonderful venues for talking to one another. Explore on your own the Merlot website, the Durham website, the Connection website, which are portals of free contents. The National Repository of Online Courses. Creative Commons, which lets people use resources on the web with different copyright clearances. The OER Commons, all these are wonderful resources. You can keep up by exploring them. You can keep up by trying one new thing out a year. You can keep up by just reading the Chronicle of Higher Education or some other online journal news. Talk to others in your discipline. Be a digital scholar. Create a podcast show or a wiki of your research and a professional plan. But remember, if you have a professional plan, if you become a digital scholar, if you're predicting the future, everything's going to be way too conservative. You cannot predict exactly where we're going. Where are we headed? Exactly. Where are we headed? What trends exist for us on the horizon? Where are we going? We've been trying trying to provide for you some kind of sense of in the future and where we might be going soon. Good luck with where you're going. Enjoy this journey. It's been great bringing you these 27 shows from Indiana University School of Education Instructional Consulting Office. I hope we've provided something for you that you can, in fact can use in your own classes. 
Good luck for these trends on the horizon.